there and welcome back to Don't Open That Door. Come along with our triumvirate of terror as we descend into darkness, hurtle into horror, and plunge into peril. If you need more tentacles in your day-to-day -day life, you're in the right place. I'm Justin, and I'm familiar with raw seafood. I'm Nico, and I am deathly allergic to shellfish. I'm Dan, and I work in the tentacle department. Oh. And oh. we're here today to review Dagon. Quick note. This is the game on Steam, not the short story, but it is a telling of the short story. This was made by Bit Golem and Hubert Mraz, and the narrator that we have here is Warm Voice. I shit you not. I tried to find your name, Warm Voice. If you're out there, hit me up. I'll give you proper credit. So we open with a sailor who's getting ready to kill himself. He admits that, yeah, okay, he has a morphine problem, but his issues run much deeper, and he begins to tell the listener who was us, his tale. You see, he was aboard a ship in the Pacific. This is during World War I. And he ran afoul of a German ship, which was bad back then if you were an ally, and was taken prisoner. He managed to escape and spent days on the open ocean, hoping to find civilization or rescue. But what he did find would destroy his mind forever. And typically when that happens, I go to Nico. So Nico, what's going down? Psychologists hate this one thing. Our sailor awakes one morning on a morning, morning, warning. Why am I saying with a W? Our sailor awakes one morning on an island engulfed in inky black mire and covered in the rotting corpses of nameless sea creatures. He theorizes that this must be an island that surfaced as the result of tectonic volcanic activity. The island is so vast that he can't even see the ocean, so he spots a large mound in the distance and begins to move towards it. I've done that once or twice myself. Yeah, I bet. So... A day passes, and as night falls, he finally makes his way to the bottom of the mound, which is actually quite massive. He goes to sleep, but has disturbing dreams that force him awake. <laughs> Determined to face no further nightmares, he begins to ascend the massive hill in front of him. He reaches the peak and sees a valley that is so... Wonderland. <laughs> he reaches the peak... And sees a valley so deep on the other side that no moonlight does. That no moonlight can penetrate it. He steals himself and descends. I bet he hey, fucking Nico. does. Hey Nico, what happens next, man? <laughs> Hold on. Oh buddy. So uh as he descends, he realizes that the valley is actually not as dark or deep as he initially thought. He reaches the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all that based on one joke, but I made one fucking joke. And we're still thinking about. <laughs> he reaches the bottom <laughs> and realizes that it's wet. Okay. Realizes yeah, that there's a body of water mm -hmm. amidst the lapping of the waves. I, no, I can't. I fucking can't with you. I swear to God. Amidst the lapping of the waves, he can see a gargantuan monolith towering ahead of him. He moves towards it and begins to examine it. Pause. The monolith is covered in etchings and hieroglyphics, with many of the creatures and images alien to his mind. He sees humanoid figures worshipping at a shrine. These figures are warped and fish-like. There is a scene of a creature killing a whale, and the whale is only a little bit larger than the creature. And then, finally, it arrives. Dan, I need you to talk about something big for me. What happens next? <laughs> I'll talk about it coming right now. Oh, no. I love how last time we were just super like, oh, yeah, ha -ha, we're not going to make that joke. Oh, no. <laughs> Session two, bitch. We going in now. Let's go. Oh, man. From the body of water, a large, almost cyclopean creature emerges. It makes its way over to the monolith and begins to make an unearthly... Utterances as it, as, as it spread its arms. This drives the sailor mad. 
and he flees back to the boat. When he finally regains his mind, he awakes in a hospital in San Francisco. Like you His do. story is unbelievable, but he doesn't attempt to make anyone believe it is true, for he knows how it sounds. His mind is broken, and nothing can mend him. The story ends with him in a room, hearing a thumping at the door, and finally a grotesque arm enters. It is too much for him to bear, and the sailor jumps from the window, ending his life. The end. Well, goddamn, if that doesn't set the tone for this episode, I don't know what will. Sometimes that's what it's like doing this with you, Justin. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I should jump out of the fucking window sometimes with you. And you wonder why you get those ads. For real. Well, we're all getting them now. So let's go ahead and talk about the audio and visuals of this one, shall we? Dan, audio. How is it? Great. Uh, I really liked the soundtrack, the atmospheric mood setting soundtrack. I enjoyed pause. I enjoyed Mr. Warm Voice. I yeah. thought he had a very good voice, narration voice. I just thought it sounded really good. Agreed. I think it was great. Nico, it was great, wasn't it? It sure was, boy fucking howdy. Like, the foley was good. The sort of, like, squelching and weird thudding noises that came from the, the fish man on the... I will quit the podcast right now, I swear to God. <laughs> I liked the sound. <laughs> Not those, but I liked the sound. <laughs> Agreed. Visuals. Justin, how'd it look? Well, I'll tell you, lad. So, it was great. This, dear listener, to help you understand what it is, it is basically like a visual novel of a short story, Dagon, by Lovecraft. And it's in such a way that it gives you a visual with limited movement, but visuals. And it's cool because you can see it and it helps you experience the story so much more when you can see it. And it matched exactly what I thought it should. Nico, what'd you think? Yeah, I was a big fan of how everything looked, honestly, even though there wasn't like mind bending visuals or anything of the like. You know, it's pretty simple set pieces and pretty simple landscapes that are depicted, but they're depicted very well. And there's a whole lot of mood that's established through just the desolation that dude is either witnessing or trying to forget combined with, you know, as now both of you and all of us have said his just fantastic narration from a uh, warm voice. So yeah, I dig it. Absolutely. Dan visuals online with you. Yeah. I echo both of you. All right. Well, since you don't want to echo too much, let's take it to the gameplay and controls. What'd you think of the gameplay and controls? Well, you asked the one person who couldn't technically play the game okay. because it is on Steam. <laughs> I am on an uh, Apple computer, which it is not available for. However, I did watch a playthrough on YouTube. I think the other two can vouch for this. It seems like there's pretty much no difference uh, between watching somebody play <laughs> and actually playing it. I mean, pretty obviously, much, yeah. I, I didn't get quite as much interactivity, obviously, However, there's not much to interact with. You kind of look around and there are some things that you can kind of zoom in and click on to read, uh, like read a piece of trivia or read the story points. Um, but I, without having actually technically played the game, it was still a very enjoyable experience for me. Dan is, of course, right. There is next to no difference between watching this on YouTube versus playing it on Steam. As you cannot move, you can only look around and like kind of... a. Uh, 270 degree field of range sometimes even less yeah and you can like dan said click on some stuff and get some trivia like one of them was like lovecraft's mom stopped him from joining the army lols. <laughs> which i thought was quite funny but the trivia aside and some of the trivia was actually like really well done yeah i actually really like the trivia yeah yeah especially they gave more on like the backstory of dagon because lovecraft didn't come up with the concept of dagon and all in all, it's pretty cool. Nico, you agree, right? Not really a ton of gameplay to talk about. No, there's really not. I And I'm kind of glad for that. It made for just a very smooth experience all in all to the point that, like, 
this is something that I could show, like, context. I'm a high school teacher. I could show this in, like, my classes, and there would be very little that they wouldn't be able to get out of the same experience. I will say, like, there is a little bit of a more, obviously, gamified element when you were, like, searching for the little secrets and stuff that you can find. And I actually missed some of them, but there is an option in the menus where you can just unlock all the secrets and read all the trivia, which I'm really glad that they did that so that people can actually make sure that they learn all the cool stuff that there is to learn about this, which, like, there is a pretty fair amount that is not only immediately relevant to the story but also just like sort of setting the scene for what was going on in his life while he was writing it so it gives you a pretty deep appreciation of not only the story but the author as well yeah absolutely now like we discussed this is a visualization of a short story and it tells the story dan how did you like that did was this palatable for you did you enjoy this medium of the story? Yeah, I did. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, one thing about cosmic horror is it can often deal with sort of the unimaginable, especially H.P. Lovecraft. His stories are right. pretty much exclusively that. So, you know, anytime there's a movie or game or something about H.P. Lovecraft's story, it's always interesting to see how they interpret it. And I thought this game did a pretty good job. I mean, it was pretty much, a, I don't want to say classic H.P. Lovecraft because his were words and not visuals, but uh, commonly represented types of things in H.P. Lovecraft adaptation. So I thought it did a pretty good job. A lot of like tentacles, a lot of sea monsters and things, which was pretty cool. And the actual like monster itself, when we see it briefly, looked familiar yet still cool and interesting so I, I thought it did a good job of visualizing that kind of story i think it's funny how one of the little secrets that you can unlock is like hp lovecraft had written down multiple times how terrifying he was of the ocean like yeah you fucking think right <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would say so now nico was this medium palatable for you Yes, it really was very like a very smooth experience. I've like played through like multiple visual novel type things before and I've also done more like on rails stories like Dear Esther and like other sort of like walking sim type things that we've talked about on the pod. So, it was a pretty like easy thing to get into and honestly like this is perhaps one of the like spoilers for recommendation but like this is probably like the way i would recommend people like experience the story honestly so i'm a big fan of how they adapted it from text to again more of like an on rails experience but still you know like somewhat gamified yeah i mean i would say that this is a great great way of seeing it and listening to it and just getting the story which by the way let me say this is a word for word retelling of the story of Dagon yeah like literally word for word so I want to switch gears a little bit this is a classic cosmic horror story kind of like what Dan said or didn't say so where does this rank for you in terms of cosmic stories you've heard is it a good one a bad one a middling one what's it for you I think it's a pretty good one. Um, and I mean, I guess this is kind of going because like you literally just said, this is a word for re retelling. So I guess this is what I'm about to say applies to the original H.P. Lovecraft story as well as this adaptation. Yes. I think it's pretty good. I do enjoy sort of modern interpretations of them, maybe more so than the, the OG Lovecraft. OG Lovecraft stories are cool. But I do like to see different people's interpretations and kind of go a little bit more in depth because, well, I've only read a couple, but his stories are very like surface level and leave a ton up to your imagination, which is obviously the point. But I enjoy like watching, well, well done cosmic horror movies that really kind of dive in deep and, and get deeper into that lore and everything. So for me, I thought this was a good story. Um, and this is not about the adaptation more so. H.P. Love's craft story. I think it's a good one, but I do, again, enjoy the modern interpretations maybe slightly more. Agreed. And Dan, I think you said it perfectly there. I think the stories are a good base, but I like what we've had since then. 
if that makes sense. And yeah, I think you said exactly what I was going to say. Nico, thoughts? Yeah, it's definitely more of like a mood piece than anything, which is another sort of like thing we learned was his intent from the jump in one of the little letters that you can discover there in the game in the like little treasures or whatever you want to call them. But I am a big fan of it. It is very simple, very to the point, nothing super flashy, nothing super outlandish just at its core there is something otherworldly going on that this guy is having a hard time reconciling with and it comes back to uh do a very casual b and e on his house before he jumps presumably to his death i guess but it's you know it's short it's effective there's not a lot to say about it that hasn't already been said in terms of the like aesthetics so i'm just gonna say like it is very effective yeah. Now, what's your favorite scene out of curiosity? My favorite scene, I think, is the end. Once we've got the full sort of recollection of everything that this dude set out to tell, because like the beginning of this story is him writing it down for posterity's sake for whoever finds him, I guess. And now that we have the full account of all the horrors that he's seen and we actually get to see this sort of club alien looking like claw hands just reach in and dude loses his mind. The visuals distort. And I just think that the ending was honestly very well done for me. I think it's when he descends the mountain and he witnesses the monument, like the pillar, the monolith. And that whole scene, the descriptions and everything, like that's what I love about cosmic horror. That right there. And yeah, I think it was really cool. Unfortunate for our protagonist, but I thought it was really cool. Dan, what's your favorite scene? I'm going to give two because my favorite scene was what Justin had just said. The When he first sees the monolith. I like the visual of that, sort of the way the they have the light, the moonlight kind of reflecting on it. You can like half see it, and I think it perfectly fit the narration, the story. Uh, let me rephrase that. I, I think that the visual that they did perfectly fits the narration and the story. Right. So since Justin said that, I kind of want to give another one that's not necessarily a story, but actually one of the trivia points. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty cool. They mentioned in one of the trivia is about the Elder Sign. Yes. And how what we commonly know is the Elder Sign is not actually what H.P. Uh, Lovecraft meant it to be. Uh, we kind of look at it as like a multi-pointed star type thing, circular type thing as well, sort of. Mm -hmm. But I guess originally mm -hmm. they used this in the game for the trivia points is it was like a, a branch, six leaf branch or something. I can't can't quite remember what it said. But it was a branch, and I thought that was really interesting because that's not how it's interpreted in modern representation. Yo, you know what's funny about that? When they tell you you can click on the elder sign, I was like, oh, I was looking for that, and then I saw yeah. the branch, and I was like, why can I click on this? Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, because you're right. After playing all that mansions and Arkham Horror and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that's the elder sign we know is the one you described. Now... I want to get to the what would you do? And cosmic stories are always like difficult to come up with a what would you do, right? Because the answer is you don't. And I'll ask you this. Keep it cosmic so you know don't make it like something intensely personal or traumatic to you, but let's say you descend, you know, you descend that mountain and you see that monolith. What would break you? What could come out of the water to break you or what could you see on that monolith that you think would make you lose your mind? I'll go first. So I have an interesting relationship with water and the ocean. Namely, I've never trusted it. So what could break me is, I think, if on the monolith, there was a scene of just like a siren call to the deep. And then... Like, just like that. And then a beautiful siren did emerge or something that just warped my mind. I think... Now I'm just imagining like... A siren from Greek mythology, like titties out and everything, but instead of a beautiful woman, it's Justin's head. Oh no! While you think of that, um, I'm. You know what? I was gonna say something poetic and deep, but not. That's anymore. what would Dan, break me. 
Okay, well, we got Nico's. Dan, what's yours? I actually think what would break me the most is maybe not seeing the monster. Like uh-huh. seeing it like swim around just underneath the water or something so that I, I know it's there and I can see that the That would shape, fuck me up, yeah. But not actually see it. So like... Even oh. long after this event took place, I would still be like wondering and and scared of that unknown thing, which I think is very cosmic horror. Yeah, I was gonna say, Dan, well done. Very cosmic, yeah. very cosmic. Yeah. So I want to take it to the critic review. There's not really a critic review for this. It does have a score on Steam just based on stars, but that's just what people thought. And by the way, out of what what do people think? <laughs> is it isn't every review what people think? Fair play. The, my mind has been broken by your cosmic Incredible. logic. Incredible. So it's on a scale from one to ten. What do you guys think it got um, on a scale from one to ten on Steam? I'm going to say 7.2. Uh, I'm going to go a little higher and say 8.3. Ten. Damn. Damn. Yeah, it's got a ten really? out of ten. Really? Wow. Wow. Based on 10,939 reviews. Wow. I guess they technically, when I looked on, so when you look on Steam, that's what it says. And then when you look on Steam DB, which I think is like, (laughs) what? It measures or something. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. But like, it's got it at a 92 or 9.2. Motherfucker, that's not 10 out of 10 then. But that's not from Steam. That's Steam DB. Which is a third party that monitors Steam. Well, then they suck at their fucking job. So, like, if you were to Google Dagon by Lovecraft, (laughs) man, you have one job. You would see that it says rating ten out of ten when you Google it. Okay. So, what about on Steam? It's got five stars. Okay. Motherfucker! I swear to God, not out of ten, but five. You know what? Don't talk to me no more. What do you guys think about this one? What does it get for you? I love this. I thought it was cool. Again, I didn't technically play the game. And I think that it would have been, even though it's essentially the same, I think it would have been 1% cooler, 2% cooler to actually like mm-hmm. be able yeah. to move and have that agency or not move, but be able to interact, have that agency. But I still really liked it. I thought it was really cool. It really set the mood and and did it very, very well. I'm going to give it a 93. I'm right there with you. It's a 92 from me. And this is not just my liking of the Dagon story, but the team that did this, whoever was behind this, amazing. Well done. I would love to see more works like this done this way. This is a great, great, great visualization. So it's a 92 for me. Yeah, honestly, I'm there as well. I was truly so very impressed. And I have read like a good chunk of Lovecraft's work. And on the podcast before, I've lamented that like, while he is certainly extremely influential, I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of his style. And I think that this particular iteration of the story does such a great job of distilling the story into not only the most essential, but like the coolest parts. I am going to give this a 94. Mm -hmm. With that being said, obviously we recommend this. Yes. Golden Seal? Golden Seal? Yes, I I would put this there, yeah. I agree. Question, does Golden Seal disqualify you from getting a diamond in the rough? I, I think, think it you must. could get both. Yes. Wait, does it, does it? Yeah. Yeah. Because the qualification for Diamond in the Rough is it would have if it was a bigger True. budget or had yeah. the, the full backing. True. Yeah. Fair enough. So, yeah. Golden Seal. That's the sound of the seal. Like, when I bring it up. Yes, all that. All that. So, well done. This does get the Golden Seal. We highly recommend it. If you do have a computer that is PC, you know, Windows PC or something, yeah, play it on Steam. You can literally just download it and play it or play it, stream it. If you it's got a free Mac, it's ninety nine. Yeah. It's free for those of you who are hard of hearing. And the if you got a Mac, well then Jack, get on YouTube and listen to it in Flash. And don't slack. 
yes, all that. But for real, if you can't play the game, I I really want you to check the YouTube out because it is great, fantastic, and support the people who did this because it's amazing. Now, we want to hear your thoughts, and they better be good thoughts because we thought hard about what we were thinking about. So now you got to come equally pause, as hard with pause. your thoughts. Okay. So we're on <laughs> X and Instagram at DOTD Horror. We're also on Facebook that's Don't Open That Door. Plus, you can check everything we've done on our website, which is, of course, dotdhorror.com. But till then, dear listener, look out for one another. Try not to lose your mind. Lovecraft was a turbo racist, so fuck him. But as always, dear listener, don't open that door. Bye. My finger hovered over the leave button when you started doing that shit again. <laughs>